guys, my name is Rebecca, aka Vegan Bodega Cat, and you probably thought that I forgot about my quarantine checklist. Well, I didn't. But before we continue, uh, let's fix some misspellings. This E should be an A. Recipe, recipes doesn't have an I. Now, when I made this checklist, I asked you guys if I spelled it right, and nobody said anything until literally weeks later, uh, so I'm feeling a little bit betrayed. English is my second language, so spelling was never my strong suit. In this video, we're gonna tackle two things on my to-do list. The first one is making yogurt, and the second one is a little bit of a room DIY situation. I hope you enjoy both projects, because I really had a lot of fun with both of them. I don't know what possessed me during quarantine, but I decided I'm gonna learn how to make soy yogurt. Soy specifically because I like my yogurts to have a little bit of a higher protein content, and as far as I know, soy is the only non-dairy yogurt with some like decent protein, you know? Depending on the brand, I do like soy and almond yogurts. Unfortunately, they're like hella expensive, you know, in this in the supermarket. So I decided that I'm gonna try to make it by myself. I first needed a recipe for soy milk because you can only make soy yogurt from soy milk that contains only like soy and water. And all the soy milk near me in the supermarkets near me right now have like additives in the soy milk so I can't make soy yogurt out of them. So in order to get a soy milk that only has soy and water, I had to make it myself. So step one, I went on Amazon and I bought myself some soybeans. So I have no idea what brand this is because I don't speak whatever this language is. I'm guessing this is Korean, but if I'm wrong, then I, I, I accept that because I can't read the language at all. But it's just plain soybeans, and what I did was I soaked them overnight, and now they look super big and beany. I don't know why, I just, I was surprised about how big they got. So like this is how it was before I soaked them, and then this is soaking overnight. So this, this is half a cup of soybeans, which is going to make four cups of milk. I don't know how many cups of yogurt that'll make, we'll see. The only other ingredient I needed was a starter, and all the research I did says that your first batch, the one that you use the powder starter with, isn't that good. So in order to get like a real soy yogurt, apparently we're gonna have to do like two batches or three batches. The first batch is gonna have the starter, and then like the next two batches, the starter is gonna be the old yogurt. This is gonna be a few day process apparently. That being said, I did have to buy a starter online. I found this Bell and Bella non-dairy yogurt starter right here. It says each one is for a quart of milk. So we're gonna make four cups of milk with these beans and then I'm gonna use one of these packets and then we're gonna make yogurt. One little hiccup is the recipe I found for soy yogurt said to use the yogurt button on the Instant Pot. My Instant Pot doesn't have a yogurt button. So this is my Instant Pot that my lovely um, patron Marlene bought me. I don't know how, I don't know if you could tell, but the only buttons on it is super broth, meat stew, cake, egg, saute, adjust, manual, keep warm, delay, start, rice, multigrain, porridge, steam, and slow cook. Maybe it's slow cook. Maybe it's keep warm. I don't know. You know what, we're gonna cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, let's make soy milk. That includes draining and peeling these beans. Peeling them, why do I have to peel them? Oh, it's leaking. This took ages, so I made a doodle clock to keep you guys entertained. I must say that was an absolute pain in the ass and I'm not quite sure if it's gonna be even worth it, but here are all of my peeled soybeans and here's the soybean peels. Ah, I got water everywhere, which I'm assuming goes in the trash. Blend with three cups of water. Every bean is going in there. I worked hard for these beans. Okay, it is a little bit past the max fill line, but I think we will survive. Let's do some blending. I don't have a cheesecloth, so we're gonna um, straighten it through this, I don't know, coffee thing? I had no idea that like the pulp would be so like thick and like I had no idea that there'd be so much pulp. It looks kind of like mashed potatoes. Pour it into a pot or a saucepan and add one cup of water, bring to a boil, skim the foam from the top, cook on medium heat for 20 minutes, why? Okay, adding a cup of water. The process of taking all the foamy bubbly stuff off the top was actually like pretty satisfying. And here's how the milk looked like when I was all done. I'm just gonna take it and put it in this jar and have it cool and keep it in the fridge until I'm ready to make my yogurt. Hi, 
hot, 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 hot. Unfortunately, that only made three cups of soy milk. That's good to know. So I guess we're just gonna make this much yogurt, which is gonna turn into like probably this much yogurt, but it's our first time, it's okay. I did a bit of research on the fabled yogurt button and I found out that there is really a yogurt button, like a button that says yogurt on most Instant Pots. Mine doesn't have one, maybe because it's like an Instant Pot mini or like I don't know, like an economical version. I didn't know, but I got pretty discouraged because there was a few workarounds, but they were so complicated and I was nervous to try them. So I vented to my mom about it and she had a great idea. She and my grandmother had been making yogurt for years and she was like, why don't we just do it the Arabic way? So we did. My mom reminded me of the Arab way to do things, which is basically make it inside of its own container. So this had boiled and it just got to the point where, very scientific, you can hold your finger inside the milk for 10 seconds without it burning. So at that point, it's the correct temperature to add the starter and then you put a lid on it and then just like wrap it in towels for a day, right? So, um, instead of doing it in the Instant Pot with Yogurt button, which if you have an Instant Pot with Yogurt button, you could do that, I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, so we're gonna take a little bit of milk, we're going to pour it into this container, and then we're gonna whisk our starter to it. It says one of these packets for four cups, but I only have three cups. Should I just do most of it? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. This, this this started out scientific and it's not scientific anymore. The way I do it is not scientific. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna... Okay, this looks like most of the starter and just whisk it with a fork. Going back into... Oh no, I lost some of the starter. It's okay, just a little bit. So we just need to warm it up. I mean, keep it warm, not warm it up. You have to make sure nobody turns the oven on. Oh, nobody. Well, nobody will wear. What if we need to cook something? We're not planning for cooking anything in the oven today. The thing is, it will cool on its own. Okay. Inside this. So we're just gonna leave that in the oven. We can check on it tomorrow morning really quick to see if it's thickening at all, and then we could do our taste test tomorrow after it's been refrigerated. Listen up, my friends. I just came back from a long day at work, so I'm looking a little rough, but you know what's not looking rough? This yogurt. Okay, so let me explain. I expected this yogurt to come out like, like liquidy, like drinkable yogurt, because all the things I read on it said that you have to make one batch with the germs, bacteria, whatever, and then it's gonna be watery, and then the more times you use the yogurt to make new batches, the thicker the yogurt will get. But I don't know if you can tell, but there's like some water right here, but this yogurt is thick. This is like freaking Greek yogurt over here. I don't know if we like hacked the yogurt, you know, um, code, I don't understand. Like, look how thick this, oh, I just like cracked it. Look how thick this yogurt is. It's basically soft tofu. And not only that, but it smells exactly like yogurt. It doesn't even smell like soy anything. It's, it smells exactly like yogurt, like unsweetened plain yogurt. So my mind is absolutely blown. So. I'm still going to go ahead and make like a second batch using this yogurt as a starter for the second batch because I already soaked some soybeans and I don't want that to go to waste. But we're going to do a little taste test and see how our first batch came out. What? Okay, it smells like yogurt but it looks like it has a texture of soft tofu. Whew, okay. Okay, I have thoughts. Number one, it's not very tangy. It smells very tangy, but it's not very tangy. Number two, it's slightly watery. Maybe that ties into the whole not tangy bit. So maybe I'll leave the second batch in a little longer. But other than that, I, I think this is like an A plus first try. All right, I just got my yogurt from the oven uh, just to put it in the fridge so I could taste test it later on in the day. And I think I, I really messed up. I really think I messed up. I think I just made carbonated yogurt. Um, don't even know if this is safe to drink, but number one, it looks like this, which as you can tell is different from last time. And I don't know if you can hear this, but listen. 
I don't know if you can hear that, but it's carbonated. You can hear it sizzling, and I'm afraid to open it. And I'm afraid to eat it, honestly. Um, listen. You have to be able to hear that. Oh my god. Oh god, okay. Oh, okay. That was anticlimactic a little bit, but... um. Okay, it smells literally like boiled eggs. I don't think this turned out okay. Oh no. I don't know if I should eat this. Oh my god. It's like if sourdough starter met yogurt. I'm gonna say this was a fail. And I'm not quite sure what went wrong, but I'm gonna throw this out. As you saw, the second batch did not turn out the way I wanted it to. I was fully prepared for it to turn out better than the first one, but I honestly don't think it was edible. Like, I, it, it smelled not, it's, it's, it was just, it did not smell good, okay? I didn't want to end up getting sick and having to go to the hospital in the middle of coronavirus, so I left that shit alone. I flushed it down the toilet, and we're putting a pause to my yogurt making career right now. If anyone knows exactly what went wrong, then like, comment it below or DM me on Instagram and give me a heads up because I'm totally down to try it again. I would love to be able to learn how to make yogurt in my own home. But I feel like this totally counts as like checking it off the checklist, so let's do that. DIY yogurt gets a check. Next up was a little table DIY that I've been wanting to do. I just don't like how much brown is in my room, so I decided to start with painting this table white. I eventually want to paint a lot of my room white, uh, but we're, we're starting with something that, you know, if I mess it up, it won't be too bad. It's not attached to my room or anything. It's not like closet door or the trimming or whatever. Here's my bedroom side table. We've had it for a really, really long time. It's, I mean, originally it was very nice, but it's very scuffed up, kind of broken. Um, where's the broken part? Right here? Oh, you can't really see it. There we go. So this leg kind of comes loose because of that crack. And it just, it's, it's, it's not the color I want. I really just want a white table. So my dad's gonna help me make it. Right, dad? Absolutely. In order to get a really clean paint job, I started off by taking the furniture apart as much as possible. And then we decided to tackle this crack. I don't know why, but my dad prefers a glue and nail combo in fixing things. So he glued this piece of wood and after it dried, he put two nails through it to make sure that wasn't going anywhere. There was a very high polish stain on the wood, so I knew that that needed to be sanded down. The legs needed to be done by hand, but the flat parts we could do with this hand sander. All right, here are the legs, which I've done. And then my dad's starting to work on the very top of the table, and once we have that finished, uh, we have to wipe down all the dust and stuff, and then we can start with the primer. It's not perfect, but I'm not trying to get all the stain off. I'm just trying to make a rougher texture so the paint can cling to it. Uh, next up, we're applying some primer. Oh, it's white? Cool. This is supposed to make it so that none of the uh, stain shows through. I think it's gonna do that very well. Apparently the primer takes like 15 minutes to dry and dad didn't wanna hold the leg. So he just put the screw back in and he's just dangling it. Genius. <laughs> now we get to the actual painting. On the top. Yes. Always, always go like this with a brush. And you dip it, mm -hmm. and then go like this. Okay. And then you take it out like this, and then you do your painting. Got it. You won't drip. <laughs> that is one done. Uh, I'm calling this a day. We have one coat of white on the top as well as oop, all of the legs. That was the first day and I could probably see, you know, how it's going to turn out. I was pretty excited. It still needed two layers to go. So the next day I woke up fired up and ready. Day two, paint layer two.
I'm using chalk paint, so uh, I need to do like a sealant cover. Most people use beeswax to seal. I was trying not to use beeswax, so I just got like a sealant paint. Uh, so after this is dry, I'm gonna give it a couple hours so it dries thoroughly. I can come back and do the final coat. Top coat time. It's finally time to assemble. But yeah. It looks so good. I love it so much. I'm gonna get like a small uh, paintbrush to fix like the little brown bits that I missed, but this is great. This is so great. Getting a good look at it? Hmm? What do you think? What? I need your professional opinion. Mish Mish. Archimedes. Mish mish. And that's my table. It's literally what I'm resting my camera on right now. And it turned out so perfect. I didn't realize this, but it's also great for my what I eat in weeks because it makes the background look nice and clean and white. You know, um, I'm definitely going to maybe paint my closet doors next. Maybe white with a little green. I don't know. We're going to figure it out. My one problem is I can't figure out what colors to paint things because I can't go to the store and look at the swatches. Maybe some companies allow you to order swatches to look at. I'm not quite sure. We'll figure that out. But I'm feeling hella cocky and encouraged that I did a really good job on this table. So more things are getting painted for sure. Let's check table off of our list. Desk gets a check. Wait, no. Uh, that was the wrong one. No, 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 no. Table gets a check. That's an ugly ass check. Let me know which thing on the list you want me to add next, or let me know which thing on my list you want me to do next. I have been wanting to do Satan for a while. I tried it when I first went vegan and it went, it went okay. It wasn't like the most successful thing, but I couldn't start that project until I found wheat gluten at the supermarket. For some reason, it's been sold out for weeks, but yesterday my mom went grocery shopping and she found wheat gluten. So now we have it and we can potentially start messing around with it. Let me know. Um, if that's the one you want me to do next or, you know, anything else on the list. But yeah, I really hope you like this video. Like, if you like, subscribe if you want to subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram where I post every single day, I'll put my Instagram right here. I also have a second Instagram for my patrons, so if you want, like, access to behind-the-scenes stuff and stuff, then become a patron and you can get access to that Instagram as well. Like, if you like, subscribe if you want to subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram where I post... Wait, I already said that <laughs> It's morning time and I haven't had breakfast yet. Yo, that literally just came out of my mouth like, like automatically. I've been recording videos for literally like two years straight and it was just like, it was complete muscle memory. <sighs> that is all I have for today and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Shout out to all my patrons, but especially my bodega bosses and my OG bodega babes. Jessica, Christina, Marlene, Lucia, Alex Creates, Alan, Michelle, Laura, Kaylin, Marielle, Alex, the Planet Earth, Nicole, Juanita, Emily, Jenny, Marcia, Charlotte, Gemini, Curtis, Stacy, Janine, Michelle, Eduardo, Chloe, Erica, Danny, and Vanessa. You guys are the absolute best, and these videos are made possible with your support. If you want to support me non-monetarily, then just subscribe and stick around to watch another video. It shows YouTube that you like my content.